Thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. Today we'll be going over uh, document library management. We'll be going over kind of the do's and don'ts and how to uh, manage your document library and what you can do with it and how to kind of make sure your users are getting the best access and best out of it. Uh, before we get started and into the meat of today's webinar, we'll be doing a little bit of housekeeping. So you may have noticed all of your microphones are muted. We ask that you keep them that way. If you have any questions, please use the Zoom chat. Uh, for that function, we have Samantha in our chat today. She's with Club Express, and she'll be answering any um, related questions that you might have throughout the webinar. Um, also, if you want to kind of rewatch or see anything that we go over today, we'll have the recording of this webinar and, in fact, all of our previous webinars over on our YouTube channel. So keep an eye out for that. We'll have this webinar up there in a couple of days. Uh, you can find our YouTube channel at clubexpress.com. That's with the D-O-T spelled out. So it's Club Express, D-O-T, C-O-M. When you go to YouTube, you'll find all of our uh, kind of version announcements, all of our um, updates, all of our training videos, and all of our webinars on our YouTube channel. For November, we're going to be taking a break from webinars. We'll talk about why in just a moment. And then in December, we'll have we'll be back to our kind of regular schedule. We will have um, our scheduled webinars posted uh, soon for you up on clubexpress.com. When you go to clubexpress.com, you'll see a calendar option in the upper right-hand corner. Um, you can click on calendar to see what our webinars. So once we announce those December webinars, you can uh, see what those will be. In November, we're actually doing our event drill. So our training, our training team, me and Sam, will be leading some training. Uh, these are going to be kind of like really in-depth, uh, longer than normal kind of training sessions with a lot of a more focused Q&A. And we'll be going really, really deep into the event module. Um, we'll be making multiple types of events. We'll be doing single activity and multiple activity and how to connect it for subgroups, all sorts of really interesting topics. And we'll be trying a lot of different kind of unique use cases for events. Um, that starts on November 2nd and it runs for a few weeks. We'll be doing um, two sessions a week for, I think, four weeks. Um, and so uh, make sure to register for that. Uh, that is, you can find the information and price for that course in your control panel. If you go to the support section, you'll find information on the upcoming event drills. You'll also find information about event drills, again, on the homepage of clubexpress.com. So with that, let's go ahead and get into... Uh, the webinar for today. We're going to be going over the document library, as I mentioned. We'll talk about the document library configuration, so the base level setup. We'll take a brief moment to talk about content syndication. We have an entire webinar and version announcement video on content syndication. That is a tool that is for what we call Model 2 or any sort of organization that has um, chapters and subgroups where each of those chapters and subgroups have their own website. And content syndication is a tool for you to share content from one of your parent websites, so the top level organization, down to all of your subgroups. Um, so that is not going to apply to every organization, but there are choices for that. And that does function with the document library. So that is a way for a top level organization to share documents from their website down to each of the subgroup websites as well. It's a pretty, pretty easy setup, so we'll run through that. We'll also talk about how to kind of organize and configure your folders. We're going to focus a lot, and you'll hear me use the term visibility a lot today. Um, that is a very, very important term when it comes to document libraries, because visibility is what determines who has access to a document. And so you might give someone a link to a document, but if the visibility isn't configured correctly, they may not see that document at all, even if they you know, click on it or even if you've given them a link, you have to make sure that your visibilities are setting set up correctly. So we'll be talking a lot about visibility today. We'll also go over the options for members to upload their own documents. So that is an option. It's not turned on by default for every organization. So don't freak out and think, oh no, my members are able to upload right now. That is an option you have to turn on for uh, your document library and for each folder you want that available to, but we'll go through what that process looks like. We'll also talk about the availability for user comments and ratings as well. Um, there's a way for users to interact with documents and say, hey, I found this document really useful or leave a comment saying, hey, there's a typo in one of your documents or something like that. Um, so we'll talk about how users can interact with those. We'll also go over the process of adding documents and the page where you can control existing documents. 
And then we'll also talk about what we can do with documents once they're in the library. We'll go over using those documents in an email as a as an attachment. And I have attachments there in quotes because as you'll see, attachments to our blast emails work more like links, but to most users, it will still look like an attachment, um, similar to those of you who have used like a Google Drive attachment. Um, it is, is more of a link than it is an actual email attachment. And then we'll talk about using website links for our documents as well. So with that kind of overview done, let's actually get into the demonstration today. Uh, we're gonna start with our document library configuration. So the first place we're gonna take a quick look at is how to actually turn that module on. So any of you who are saying, you know, hey, I'm looking at my website right now and I don't see document library, that module may not be enabled. And there's an extra important step. Most of our modules, you just turn it on, set who you want to have access for, but specifically for the document libraries, you want to pay very, very close attention to what access level you set for this, because this is our first step where I will, again, talk about visibility. Um, this is the first place where we make a visibility decision for our document library. And then we'll also go through our kind of folder defaults. We can set kind of what our general folders are going to look like. We can, of course, change it folder by folder, but we can set a default for whenever we um, create a new folder. And we'll talk about the custom tags option and we'll take a quick look at the tag manager. Um, those tags are used in multiple modules. It is just a way for people to uh, have an option to search for certain documents and search for certain things in the website. So let me go ahead and hop over to my demo website really quickly. I am on our Chicago Association of Financial Planners website, and I'm currently logged in as an administrator. You can see up here in the upper right, I'm logged in as Martin Smith. To get to my document library, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my control panel. The document library module is going to be found in the website tab of the control panel. And in the website tab, the document library, since it's a module that is accessible both as an administrative side and there's also a member side to the document library, it's going to show up in our website module section. And it's going to be right here under document library. If you need to turn this document library on, if it's not currently accessible, you would need to go over to our configure section and keep in mind that the configure option is going to be different depending on what tab you're in. So when you hit configure, you want to make sure that you're already in this website tab of the control panel. You will hit configure. And if the document library isn't already enabled, it might be down here under this line that says disabled modules for this tab. Anything below that line is something that hasn't currently been enabled. Anything above it means it's currently on and you should see it in your library, in your uh, list of modules. So if we come up here to document library, this is where we would go and we would click on document library and we can change the status of this module. The first thing we'd want to choose, if it's currently set to inactive or disabled, if we want to turn this module on, we would want to set it to active. You'll see the original name is document library. We do have the option to change the name. So if you wanted to call it, you know, the archives or document repository, you know, whatever you want to name that for your organization, you don't have to stick with document library. For us, we've said we're just going to stick to calling it the document library. And then for our menu text, we've shortened it a little bit to just documents. That means whenever we put that on our website menu, instead of being the full document library, it's just going to say documents. But once you click on it, the function name is still going to show up as document library. And let's skip to the most important thing that we're going to deal with here, which is our visibility. So I've already mentioned a few times, visibility is very, very, very important today. The first selection of visibility is for the entire module. And we have two options here, members only and any website visitor. And this is going to be a limit for every single thing that we put inside of our document library. So if you're an organization that says, there is no reason for anyone that isn't a member to have access to any of the documents in the library. What you would want to select is members only, and that's going to limit every single document in your library to your members. An important note, and I'll mention this again, an important note about setting it to members only, if you were to email out a document to your members, when they click on that link, it is going to take them to the website and force them to log in in order to get access to that document. The reason for that is because whenever we send that document out, our website is going to want to check and make sure that they are a member before they access that document because we want to kind of vet them because you have essentially told us, I want only members to be able to access this. That is a valid way to do it if you have some documents that are very sensitive um, that you don't want the general public to be able to get access to. 
What I see a lot of people do is instead of doing it at this level, they will set the document library to any website visitor. This means that anyone can access the document library, but once again, we will have finer detail control further down. So we can also set details for folders or groups of folders or even individual documents of who should have access to any particular document or folder or group of folders. So nine times out of 10, I usually recommend setting the document library itself to any website visitor, unless you know that every single document you're going to store needs that kind of extra layer of protection to make sure that people log in. Once we save this, it's going to apply whatever changes if we've activated the module or changed our visibility. We should see the document library show up if it's set to active. You'll also see next to this module, you'll see a little PM for some modules before it actually said M. This is a little quick preview. You don't have to click into the configure to figure out what the visibility of a module is set to. This is our visibility right here. So P stands for public, M stands for members. So PM means public and members. If you just see an M and no P, that means the visibility of this module is set to just members. And that would mean that the module is set up to require um, access for or require members in, to log in in order to access a document. So that's the process for actually turning the module on. Now let's go ahead and hop into the document library. I'm going to go ahead and click on it from my control panel. And it's going to take me to the document library manager. Now this is the admin side of the document library. This is going to be where we can go in and make changes and upload documents and, and kind of like set controls like that. The first thing I'm going to show you is the very right option on this row of buttons. We've got our options section. When we click on options, this is going to give us two things that we can select. We can choose folder defaults, and these are all of the default options for our folders. And then we can also choose other options, and there's only really one check mark here, which is allow custom tags on documents. So um, let's talk about our folder defaults first. Our folder default, here's another place where visibility is gonna show up again. This is not a going to apply any changes to our existing folders. What these folder defaults do is anytime that you create a folder, it is going to pre-select whatever settings you set here as the default for that folder. For each individual folder, you can then change that. So for our defaults, we have set visibility members only. There's a few other options, and you actually get more detailed options than the module at large when you are working on this kind of visibility. You have the options for all users public. That's the same as all website visitors for the module. We've got members only, which is the same as the one we were looking at before. But then we've got two other options here for one of our defaults. We've got all users member download only, which means that even if you're not a member, so if you're not logged into the website or if you don't have a membership, this would mean that they can see that the document is in the library. But if a non-member or someone who isn't logged into the website tries to download that file, it will say, hey, you need to be logged in and you need to be a member in order to access this document. So they'll see that the document exists in the library, but they can't actually see the content of the document. The other option is administrators only, which means this document, this entire folder would only be visible um, for administrators, meaning that visibility option, meaning it won't even show up. It won't show up for members, it won't show up for, for users. If we set it to administrators only, that entire folder acts like it doesn't exist unless you are an administrator, then that folder would show up in the options, in the list of folders. The second uh, option we have under our defaults is our member uploads. Members do have an option to upload documents, but this is something that I mentioned earlier, you can say one of three options. You can say allowed unrestricted, meaning any member, anyone who is a logged in member of the website can add whatever documents to the document library they want. So they can add anything they want to this folder. Um, we'll talk about any possible restrictions in just a little bit, but um, anyone could add whatever they want to that, uh, to that specific folder if it's allowed unrestricted. The moment they upload it, it becomes available to all other members. A second option is allowed with approval, meaning once a member chooses to upload a document to that folder, it will go into an approval section. Um, it will ask for uh, an administrator to approve that document, and we'll be talking about approvals in just a few minutes. But um, once, an, once a member uploads that folder, an administrator will go and have to preview that document and say, oh yeah, that document's fine. And then once an admin kind of says that's okay to have, then it will show up in the document library, but it won't show up in the document library for other members until it is approved. 
And then we get these three check boxes. We get show on website. If we uncheck this, this is similar to a visibility option. That means it only shows up on the back end of the website. So it's not going to show up on the kind of actual document library uh, previewer at all. This does not limit the access to the documents. So even if we say all users don't show on the website, I could say, you know, this is a you know, a repository. This is a folder of documents that I'm only going to use for links or attachments to emails. They don't need to be able to see the folder in the document library. But if I send a link to it, if it's set to all users, anyone can access that. This is a very useful setup. I use this quite a bit. What I use that for is what I just described. I will use it to keep all of my um, link documents and all of my email attachments in a folder that I don't show on the website. So that way I don't need to worry about keeping it quite as clean and organized. I can put you know, just whatever documents I need to put in there and I can use those to link to um, kind of things in the website. If it's set to all users, then I don't need to worry about members being forced to log in but no one will see it on the website. If I have the visibility set to members only, and it's also set to not show on the website, that document would still require members, if I linked to it, say in an email, that document would still require members to log in to get access to it. But again, it will not be, the folder itself will be invisible when looking at the uh, document library. And then, then we get these two options, allow ratings and allow comments. That would mean documents in this folder both allow members to say, you know, hey, five out of five stars, great document. You know, if you're if you're having people, you know, comment on some sort of, uh, say, some sort of like announcement, or you know, maybe you're having people give their opinions on a new logo. You can put any sort of documents in there and allow people to give ratings. And you can also similarly allow people to leave comments um, on it, just like you know, some sort of like Facebook post or something like that. You can post a document, and then people can say, you know, hey, I really like this, or hey, there's a typo. Um, people can can leave what how they feel about that particular document. Uh, the alternate is to turn that off and say, you know, we don't need input from our members um, on you know how that document looks or how they feel about it. So that's our folder defaults. Again, this doesn't change anything to current documents. This is just a default so that when we create a new folder, it will preload this. So we can save ourselves a little bit of time by setting the most common type of folder we'll be using. So most commonly, I'll leave it to all users. Most commonly, I want to show it on the website. And usually I say not allowed, only admins are allowed to upload photos. So this is kind of the, the normal folder that I'm creating uh, for most of my test websites. The last option in our options section is this um, allow custom tags. So if you are going to use the tags function to let people search for documents, so if they're looking, searching for, you know, bylaws, you can uh, tag all of your documents with bylaws, things like that. Or if you have like, you know, board meeting minutes, you can tag all of your, those documents with board meetings, and then someone can search for certain tags. This just allows that to be used in that folder or in that, uh, in the documents library. If you turn that off, then the tags won't function for the documents library. So those are our options. The to the left of that, we've got our manage tags tool. We have an entire webinar on managing tags. So if you uh, want to learn more about the way tags work, tags aren't only for the document library. Tags are used all over Club Express. Um, they're used in our news module. They're used in our blogs module. They're used in all sorts of things. And a lot of things can be set to a tag. So if you set a certain type of tag, it might, when someone searches for something like that, it might yield results that are documents, but it can also yield results that are um, say some sort of news article or something like that. When we click on manage tags, this is going to take us to our tag manager page. You'll notice when you look at this breadcrumb trail up here, we are no longer in the document library. This takes us over to our tag manager tool. And this is where we can go and we can create new tags and we can search through existing tags. Um, but again, we have an entire uh, uh, webinar. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because if you have questions about that, we can always go back and, and review that uh, already existing webinar. So I'll go back to my document library. The next button over to the left is our approvals button. So you did, we did see in our options, we can set a folder to allow for member uploads. If we have those uploads set to require approvals, any documents that a member uploads will exist here and they will require approvals from this section. We will go through what that member upload process looks like in just a little bit. But essentially all you have to do is come in here, look at the documents that have been posted by members. Anytime a member uploads a document, it's just gonna show up here in a little table. And then you can check off 
whatever documents you want to approve. If they all match the approval, you can check them all off by hitting this little checkbox in the upper left and then just say approve and they will all be uh, approved. And the moment they're approved, they start showing up in the document library um, for other members to start viewing. The last section we'll get is this little search function, and this lets us search for documents. We can search for things like text in certain document titles or descriptions. We can search for tags. So this is that tag search that we were talking about. So if we've tagged a document with a certain, you know, there's a document that exists that is tagged with the barbecue tag. So that's one of the ways that you can search for different documents. You have to enter some sort of search. Um, we can also search for documents based on certain types of formats. So we can search for all of our PDFs. We can search for all of our spreadsheets. Those would be Excel files. We can search for text documents, image videos. We can filter those around, or we can say, show me all of my documents in a particular folder. But most importantly, this takes us now to our actual document library. We have some reports. The reports for the document library are kind of like a little bit pared down. This essentially just lets you see, you know, show me all the documents in certain folders. In my opinion, I don't usually run reports for my document library. If I'm looking for something, I usually just use my eyes on this section. This is the layout of our document uh, of our document library. Every document library always has a top level folder. The top level folder is invisible. It is just the container for the entire document library. You get two options when you click on top level folder. You get add a subfolder or subfolder display sequence. The rest of our folders below the top level when you click on them will have extra options like view documents. You can't actually put documents in the top level folder because again, that folder is just there to contain other folders. Every item we see here is a folder. So our bylaws, that's a folder of documents, our personal finance, education, all of these are individual folders. And we can then see a few of them have this little plus icon to the left. So just like when you're browsing folders on a Windows computer or a Mac, you can put folders inside of folders. So we work the same way. You can put a folder inside of the bylaws folder. So you'll see drafts here, and that is a folder that is existing inside of this other folder. If we want to take look at take a look at the documents that are in the folder, we actually have to click on it and choose view documents. If we wanted to create another folder within a folder, we have the option to hit add subfolder and that will start the creation process for a new folder within that folder. So if I wanted to have, you know, drafts and pending approval. So let's say We've got a draft of our bylaws, but once our bylaws are through the draft process, it still needs to get ratified by the board. So we want an extra folder that says, you know, pending approval. What I would do to create another folder inside this bylaws folder is I would click add subfolder. And it's going to give us this little pop-up window and it's going to ask us a few questions. And you'll notice a lot of the selections here are those same selections we were looking at in our defaults. And you'll see that they are pre-selected. So let's go ahead and give our folder a name. We'll say pending approval. So pending approval, we can choose to give our document, our, our folder a description. We don't have to. I usually leave the description blank, but if we wanted to have some sort of description, anytime someone clicks on this folder on the member side of things, they'll be uh, shown this description of the folder as well. So we could say something like, you know, bylaws waiting for approval. Then we can see this option that says subfolder of bylaws. Now, by default, this is going to be a subfolder of the folder we clicked on to create it, but we can choose to move it around. So if we ever need to move an entire folder from one location to another, we don't have to create a new one and move new folder, you know, move all the documents into that folder. We can actually move entire documents whole cloth. So if we didn't want this to be in the bylaws folder, we could say, I actually want this to be in the education folder, but I actually do want it to be in the bylaws folder. So I'll change that back. I will show you what it looks like to move a folder from one place to another in just a minute. We will see yet again, here's our visibility selection. Now it's already preloaded with the uh, all users public selection that was set to my default. Because these are our club bylaws, I'm gonna say, I actually want these to be members only. And for the first time, we're actually gonna see an extra option here in visibility. So we've got those same selections we've had uh, this whole time, but we'll also have an option that says members of a committee. So we can set this folder to be specifically for a certain committee. 
And so since these are waiting for approval by the board, we can say, you know, this is actually something that's not visible to our members. This is something that is only visible to our board of directors. Mm -hmm. And so this will only show up on the document library if you are in the committee board of directors. All of our members who are not in the board of directors committee, it will act like that folder doesn't exist at all. Then we'll see the members upload option again. We'll see not allowed, allowed with approval, unrestricted. It's already using that not allowed that I set as our default before. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave it that way. And then we'll see those same three checkboxes show this folder on the website. I'll say yes. Again, it's only gonna show the folder on the website for people that are in the board of directors. And then for ratings and comments, I'll turn comments on so that people that are in our board of directors can leave comments. But you know, ratings are not quite as important in this situation. And I'll go ahead and save. And so now if I click my little bylaws plus icon here, we'll see there's two folders inside of it. We've got our bylaws and then inside that bylaws folder, we've got our drafts folder and our pending approval folder. We'll also see a preview to the right of how many documents are currently inside of that folder. So bylaws has seven documents inside of it. Our drafts and our pending approvals both have no documents. And you can kind of take a quick preview down the list and say, okay, I can quickly see how many documents are inside. If we want to take a look at what documents are inside of a folder, you just click on that folder and you'll see an option that says view documents. When you click into view documents, you get a few options. You'll see a list of all of the existing documents that are inside of that folder. And you get a few buttons, you get add document, add multiple documents and display sequence. Anytime you see display sequence, that actually, that term shows up all over Club Express. That means just change the order. So if I want this voting bylaws to be at the top of the list instead, I can just click on display sequence and you'll see this is all the documents that are in that folder. And I can use these little arrows to reorganize it. Or if I want to automatically alphabetize my list, I can click this little alpha option and it will sort all of my documents by alphabetical order by title. So now they are all alphabetized if I wanna do it that way. For adding documents, we can choose to either add a single document and that will ask for a little bit more detail or I can actually add a group of documents all together. If I hit add document, it's gonna give us this little pop-up that asks for some information. It's gonna say, what folder is this going into? Now you'll notice I'm currently in my bylaws folder, but once again, I have the option to say, I actually don't wanna put this in bylaws. I wanna put this in you know, pending approval bylaws. And even though I'm uploading on this bylaws folders page, because I select a different folder, this document would go into a different folder. So keep in mind, again, because I'm already on this page, it will pre-select the document or folder that I am on the page for but you can change which folder this is going into. So you don't need to go you know, back and forth and back and forth into each folder. You can just choose the folder from here. We would set a document title. And so I can say, you know, new bylaws. I can enter a description. So again, this is an optional field. We don't have this little red dot that shows up. Anytime you see this little red dot, that means that is a required field for the description. That is once again, optional. And whenever someone clicks on the details for that document, they would see this description, but you don't have to fill it in. I usually don't set descriptions for every single one of my documents. That would just be a lot of extra work. This is a location where we can set a tag now. So we can look and see, here's a few of our pre-existing tags that we can use. We can type a tag in here if we want to create a new one, but most times you can go and look and see, you know, hey, this is a leadership tagged document. Um, and you know, this, this anytime that someone is searching in the document library for leadership documents, if they search for that tag, anything tagged with leadership is going to come up. We can set an author. So if there's a certain person that is you know, responsible for creating these documents, you can list them there and people are able to search by document. Um, you can also set a creation date and a revision date. All of these tags, authors, create date, revision date, all of those are optional. This is just extra details for that particular document. Um, and this is just a way for you to... Um, you know, set extra details when you're creating the document that people can see. You don't have to fill any of that in. We once again get another visibility option. So we can still choose visibility, all users, all users public, members only, 
people who have access to the pending approval folder or the administrators only. So we can control not only by folder who has access to what document, but we can also control each individual document within a folder. So maybe in our bylaws folder, our current most recent bylaws are visible to everyone, but maybe outdated bylaws are only in there for administrators for reference, or maybe they're only for members, but the public is able to see modern bylaws. However you want to control that, you can set up each individual document as well. So now that we're at the document level, let's talk about visibility kind of tier structure. So if I set this document to be all users public, the document is going to treat itself as though it is a public document. But I always tell people to think about document, the entire document library as kind of a um, filing cabinet. If I put this document that is available to the public in a folder that is only available to members, even though the document says all users public, since it's in a members only folder, that folder will restrict the document below it. So in that case, if I set bylaws to be members only, even though this new bylaws document is set to all users public, it would not allow for non-members to access this document. So the document technically wouldn't be public because it's in a members only folder. And that includes the entire module as well. So if I have um, the module set to members only, even though I set this document to public, because the module is set to members only, this document would only be accessible by members. This applies to folders within folders as well. So if I put the, let's say we're looking at the bylaws folder right now, if I put the drafts folder and say the drafts folder is public, but that top, the higher up bylaws folder is members only, that draft folder would also be members only, even though it's set to public. So remember, those visibility options always kind of uh, go down. In any point in the chain, whatever the strictest visibility setting is, will apply to everything below that in the chain. So we've got that visibility setting for all users public. Um, if we want it to be truly public, we really do need to set um, not just the document, but also the folder, also the folder containing that folder, and also the entire module to be public if we truly want this document to be public. Now that we've got that set, we can set a select our document. It's going to open up and we can just select whatever document we want to select. So we'll say, I'm going to upload this little PDF template. It's going to upload that document. You'll notice as I upload, we get this little notice here saying max file size 300 megabytes. So this is a good time to talk about that. There is no limit to the storage capacity of your document library. You can put as much in your document library as you want. The one limitation we do set is any individual file can only be up to 300 megabytes. So keep that in mind when you're when you're adding documents. This is not going to limit you for things like PDFs, for things like text files, um, any sort of spreadsheets. Very rarely will any PDF or spreadsheet or image or document really be over 300 megabytes. That's a pretty large document. What this does limit is things like videos. So if you're wanting to use Club Express to store, um, you know, large amounts of video files, that is not a very long video. Um, video files are usually a lot bigger. And so that's one place where people kind of, you know, bump into bump into storage limits is if they're wanting to upload that kind of thing. For video storage, we usually recommend using a dedicated video storage service, something like YouTube, something like Vimeo. Um, there's a lot of different video services out there. They're a lot better equipped. You know, Club Express does a lot of things really well. Video storage is one that we don't really put a lot of our time into just because there's so many existing free services out there that are much better at it than us. So that's why we kind of have this limit here. Um, it's it's just a, a more convenient location to store um, off of Club Express. The document library is intended for, again, things like PDFs, Word format, um, any sort of standard document. There's not a um, format limit. So whatever document you want to store, if it's a, it's a, if it's a file that goes on your computer, it's pretty much a file that you can put on the document library. So there's not a limit in that way. Once we've selected our document, we have this last option, we can set a preview image. The preview image really only matters for sharing this in this document on so, uh, like other parts of social media. So if you're going to 
uh, send a tweet or a, a zeet. I, I can't remember what the terminology is for that right now. <laughs> but if you're going to post to Twitter or X, um, you know, a link to a document on your website, if you set a preview image, then that is the image that will show up when you share it on social media. Same with Facebook. If your group has a Facebook page and you share this document, a link to this document on a Facebook page, this preview image is what will show up when you share that link. Um, so it's not going to really show up on Club Express per se. It'll show up when you share it other other places. You don't have to select a preview image. You'll notice there's no red dot. Most times I don't bother with setting a preview image. I just set the name, the title, visibility, and I upload my document and move on. Once you hit save, depending on the size of the document, usually that process goes pretty fast. If it's a rather large document and you hit save, it might take a few seconds for it to update because sometimes those uploads can take a few seconds behind the scenes. So um, one thing I would warn against is don't, if you hit that save button and it hangs for, you know, three or four seconds, don't hit the save button, you know, a dozen times. Uh, we had a bug a long time ago where if you hit the save button 10 times, it would add 10 copies of it. We fixed that bug, but you know, for good measure, don't hit the button a bunch of times if it's loading. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem, but you know, better safe than sorry. So now that I've uploaded a document, let's talk about what you can do with those documents. We can see the list of our documents here. If we go over to the right hand, if we look through like what we have here, you'll see the information that we set for it. So we've got a create date. That's when uh, we filled in that creation date on the document creation section. You'll notice some of these don't have a create date filled in because it's an entirely optional field. You can get a quick glance of what each of the visibilities is set for. So some of these are public, some of them are set to member visibility, some of them are set to admin visibility. You can see if members have rated that document. So you'll see most of these have, have ratings turned off. Some of these documents do have uh, the ratings, you know, members have, have filled in ratings. Um, if you click this little red circle to the right of a rating, it will reset it. So we can see there, this member application rules has a current rating of 3.5. People are kind of, you know, middle of the road on it. If we updated this document and we wanted people to start, you know, rating fresh, we can always hit this button to reset our ratings. Looks like that's not functional. I'll have to talk to someone about that. I used that the other day and it worked, but for some reason my ratings aren't resetting. Oh, my page is hanging up. Sorry about my internet. Let's see if that works now. Nope. Still not resetting my ratings. Well, I'll have to figure out why our ratings aren't resetting, but you're supposed to be able to reset those ratings right there. Um, and it's also supposed to reset the number of ratings. So we can see that 29 people have rated this for a total of 3.5. And if you hit that button, it's supposed to reset the, say, the, the ratings, but for some reason that's not functioning. So we'll have to uh, address that. It wouldn't be a Club Express webinar if we didn't have um, some sort of bug discovery in the middle of it. Then we also get this option for, um, I'm sorry, the number applies to the downloads. We get the number of downloads since it was uploaded. So we get the this little uh, date. So this was uploaded on 8.30, or at least it was last uh, reset on 8.30, 2017. And you can see 29 people have downloaded it. Just like with our ratings, we do have an option to reset that. I'm not sure if this reset button will work. That one does work. So that will let you reset the the number of downloads. So if you update it and you want to track how many people have downloaded, but you want to start that over, you can reset it. But this is a place where you can go and see how many people are actually downloading my documents. So we can see, you know, for the CAF bylaws here, we can see that 58 people have downloaded this particular document since 2014. If I want to say, you know, hey, for the new year, we're going to reset this. You can hit this reset button. A lot of people have asked, you know, is there a way to unreset that or get those numbers back? Keep in mind, no. Once you reset that, it wipes that out in our database. So um, you don't want to reset those numbers unless you really want to start fresh because you're not going to be able to get that 58 back. Um, what I usually recommend is if you really want to remember that number, you know, write it down somewhere, or save it on your website, you know, have a spreadsheet for document downloads if that's something that you really want to track, you know, month by month or something like that. We also get a, a preview of what format it's in. So we can see here we've got, you know, here's our, our PowerPoint. That's the document, those new bylaws. That's that PDF that I just, or a PowerPoint that I just uploaded. We can also see that some things are stored as PDF. Some of these are Microsoft Word documents. You can even upload things like uh, image files. If we want to change something about one of our documents, we can click on the pencil to update our documents. 
So if we look at this document that I just uploaded, here's those new bylaws, there's those tags. Let's say I decide down the road, hey, this leadership tag actually doesn't apply to this document. I'm going to take that off. And I can also do things like update the document itself. So let's say, you know, these new bylaws, they had some typos. My members let me know. I can come in here and I can update. And I can say, I want to upload a new version of that. I can select. And let's say, you know, I know this is the same file, but once again, I'm just going to select that same document and pretend it's an updated version. And we get two options here. We can preserve the original file name or we can use a new file name. So if this was, you know, template 2.0, but we wanted it to use this same file name as before, you get two options, preserve original file name or use new file name. If I choose use new, it will change the file name in the system to use the file name that is of the document that I just uploaded. If I do preserve original, it will change the file name of the document I just uploaded to the original file name that I selected before. So that's a way for you to overwrite. This is really, really useful for when you're doing things like links on the website. Um, because if we have a document that we need to replace, if I've linked to it on my homepage or I've sent that link in an email, I don't want to have to resend that link again. If I update the document, this will preserve those links. If I was to just delete the document and re-upload it, all of those links that I set on my homepage or links in emails that I sent out, those links would no longer work. Um, because again, those are trying to point to a document that has been deleted. Using this update function, this will keep those links working for quite a long time. So that is one way that you can you know, maintain your documents if you need to go back and, and reload them. You also get this little eyeball icon, and this will let you view that document. If it is a, um, if it is a, a, like a PDF, or a, I think just PDF actually, when you click on the eyeball, it should just open it in a new tab. So there's a PDF and it's going to open those bylaws in a new tab for me if you're on a modern web browser. So here's some, some little bylaws that we have loaded. That is a PDF. Most modern web browsers, when you try to download a PDF, it will just display it for you. Um, for things like Microsoft PowerPoints, you know, spreadsheets, Microsoft Word documents, when you click on the eyeball, instead of showing it to you, it's just going to download it because some web browsers don't have the ability to display those types of document formats. So that's adding and editing a document. There is one extra way to add documents, and it's this middle button up here that says add multiple documents. This is a really useful tool. Honestly, nine times out of 10, I am going to click add multiple documents instead of add document, even if I'm just adding one document. So when you click add multiple documents, you don't have to select more than one. You can just select one and you'll notice this upload page is a little bit more simplified than the add single document. So it's not going to require a name. It's gonna require a lot less. So this is actually a little bit faster. I can do that same thing, select a document, it's gonna upload that file. I can set my visibility to all users. And if I'm doing multiple documents at once, when I hit the select documents option, I can select five or 10 and I can either you know, drag to cover multiple documents or I can control click to select multiple documents. And then when I hit save, it will upload multiple here. So that's a way to get you know, five, 10, 15 documents all at once. You'll notice when I do that, so let's select that document again. You want to, before you hit save, you wanna let this little loading bar finish. So this is it loading this document. If you try to hit save before that's done, it's gonna pop up a little error message saying, you know, you must wait for that to be done. Um, it doesn't hurt anything, just, you know, it's just gonna give you an error message that you didn't need to receive. So you can just wait for that to get done. Once it's uploaded, you do have the option for each item uploaded to set a title for it. I usually just leave the title blank. And if you leave the title blank, it'll use whatever your file name is. So if I just want my file name to be, you know, template.powerpoint, I can just save that. It's going to upload it. And you'll see the title for that document is now template.powerpoint. So again, there's that new bylaws. I set a different title for it, but the actual file behind new bylaws is the same as this one down here. When I'm uploading, if I don't enter a title, it'll just use the file name as the title. All right. So let's talk about one extra option before I move on to kind of the member side of things and how to share these documents out and post them in places. 
Let's talk about content syndication. This should be pretty quick because it's a pretty simple, uh, it's a pretty simple concept. This is the Chicago Association of Financial Planners website. This is actually a subgroup of a larger, larger or organization. If I hop over to this other website over here, the uh, Illinois Association of Finance, this is the parent website. So this is the top level website over multiple subgroup websites. And this Chicago Association of Financial Planners is one of those subgroups. On this website, whenever I'm looking at the folders in this document library, so again, this is a different document library for a different website, but this is a website with subgroups and each subgroup has their own website. When I go to one of my document library folders, I get an extra option. Oh, I need to reload the page. Sorry, my, my session timed out. Okay, so let me go get back to my document library again. So now that I'm logged in and my session hasn't timed out, if we go and edit our folder, we have an extra option. So this is the same folder edit options that we saw before, but you'll notice there's one extra checkbox here. So for our national policies for this folder, we have checked the box share folder with lower level groups. And all that does is says, hey, everything in this folder, including all of the subfolders, so every folder below it, so national policies, the documents inside national policies, PR finances, and IAF chapters, all of these folders and all of the documents within are going to be shared. And you'll see it gets this little, this little kind of breakout section that says shared next to it. There's a few other folders that have been shared. Anything with that shared status checked is going to show up on our lower level website as well. So let's actually hop back to our website and let's take a look now at what it looks like on the member side. So I'm going to go back to my control panel and to take a look at a document from the member point of view, I'm going to hit switch to view mode right here. And now I'm in view mode. And that means when I click on any of these modules, it's going to show me the module like I'm a member instead of showing me the module from the admin perspective. So now if I click on document library, this is what our document library looks like for members. And there's our national policies. So at the bottom of the document library, all three of these, those are our three folders that are being shared on our IAF website, national policies, IAF conference, conference, regulatory updates. Those are being shared. And on my website, national policies, IAF conference, regulatory updates. So it'll just tack whatever folders we share onto the bottom of our document library. When we were editing, these folders didn't show up in our uh, options for the CAF. So this Chicago Association of Financial Planners, this subgroup, even if you're an admin of Chicago Association of Financial Planners, you can't edit these. That's because they are coming from the organization above us. But I do have access to look at the documents that have been shared with me and all of the folders therein. So we can go in and look at all of those folders um, from our parent organization. Again, this only applies to organizations that are chaptered organizations where each chapter has their own website. So that's kind of a, a niche use, use case. For the way we look at documents, if we want to look at a particular folder, all you have to do is click on it. So we can see bylaws here. And if I click on pending approval, you know, we haven't added any folders or any documents to this folder yet. We'll see there's that description I set, bylaws waiting for approval by the board. We get a couple options. We'll see the name of the folder that we have selected. And then you'll see an upload option on the, on the right-hand side. If you see upload, that is what the membership upload point looks like. So this is how members see the, the module. And this is where members can go to upload their own documents to a particular folder if that folder is set to allow it. Now, this is one of the few times where looking at the website um, as an administrator is going to give you slightly different access than a member will. Um, let's see, if I upload as an administrator, it's not going to ask for approval even if it is set for, uh, even if it is set to require approval. Um, from members. That's because I am an administrator and there's no reason to ask an administrator to receive approval since they can approve it themselves. So it just skips right past this. But whenever a member clicks on this upload option, they're going to see this little pop-up just the same as you would. And they can go through and fill in this information and they can upload their own document. And once that document has been approved, it will show up in the document library. When a member is looking at a folder with documents in it, this is what it will look like. They won't see quite as many details. Um, and all they need to do is just click on the little green down arrow, and that is how they access that document, or they can click on the document title to view it. So once again, here's those bylaws. I can see details. I can download the document. 
They can also click on it to see the individual details. And then we can also add some ratings. So this is where I can say, you know, out of five stars, I'll give this a 3.5. And I can also set a comment. And I can submit. And so now we'll see Martin Smith left the comment so cool. There's my rating that I submitted and there's the overall rating. So that's how you kind of like submit comments and information. That's how you download the document. If you don't want to, you know, look at the details, if you just want to skip straight to downloading the document, you can just click on the green arrow and that will take you straight to the download. Um, so that's the, that's the member side. It's pretty simple. There's not a lot to do as a member other than just browse the different folders. Um, there are options for searching. And this is that same search that we saw before. So members can come in here and search for documents that are tagged with any tags in the system. They can search for particular documents in a folder. Most times I don't see people using the search function very often. Most times people just go straight to the folder they want and they find it that way. Um, so I don't personally tag a lot of documents just because I find that users are pretty adept at just saying, hey, I'm looking for bylaws. So I'll click on the bylaws folder. As long as you keep your folders you know, pretty clear, um, it's easy for people to find the documents that they're looking for. So let's talk about what to do with documents once we have them in the system. So if we head to our control panel again, there's a couple things we can do with documents. One that I like to do is email them out to people as attachments. And again, attachments there, you can't see me, but I'm doing air quotes. These are air quotes attachments. If we go to our communications section, if we're going to send a blast emailing out to people, so I'm going to, I'm not going to go through the entire details of sending an emailing. We have other training videos and webinars on that, but what I will focus in on is when you're creating an email, there's an element called file. And that is how you, again, quote unquote, attach a file. Now it's not going to actually attach it to the email that is sent. It is going to create a download link for whatever file you select. So always keep that in mind. It's not actually attaching the file. The reason we don't attach files is because anytime a bulk email sender sends, you know, 20, 50, 100, 1,000 emails that have attachments in them, that is a red flag to a lot of email uh, provider tools. So things like Gmail and Outlook, if they see that an email has been sent to 100 people and that uh, all of those include an attachment, a lot of times those get marked as spam and they don't get delivered. Um, so a way around that is instead of sending it as an actual attachment, we just send it as a link. But the way it looks in the system, when we add a file link here, if we just drag that file link option over, all we have to do is click on this little pencil and we get two different options. We can attach an existing document or attach a new document. If we choose an existing document, it's just gonna say, hey, which document do you wanna pull from? There's all of our folders that we have. And I can say, I want my bylaws and I want that template that I just selected. And that's all we need to do. Now there's this little cloud download option with the title of the document. And whenever someone clicks on that in an email, it'll just look like that. So there's just a little cloud download with that option. And the rest of the email, you can let people know, hey, look at the bottom of the email. There's you know attachments to, to download. Um, so it's a pretty simple attachment process. If you do, if you instead want to attach a new document, it's going to open up this add document option. So if you want to send a new document, you would still select what folder this is going into. So if I'm sending out a document that I'm uploading from my computer, what the system is going to do is it's going to take that document from your computer, upload it into the document library, and then attach it. So in this case, if I say, you know, this is going to go into my, you know, pending approval, I'm sending this to my board members, and I can say, you know, hey, this is that new bylaws you know, version five. I can still do things like add tags, add authors. It's just that standard document edition um, kind of process that we've gone through. I'll set this to be, you know, public and I'll select that same document. It'll take a second for it to upload. And there it goes. So now that I've given it a new title, when I save this, it should go ahead and update that title. So it'll always use the title as the link. So there's that new bylaws version five 
Um, and now that I've uploaded that, that is actually also in our document library. So just the process of saying, attach a new document, we'll add a document to our document library, even though we're not in our document library uh, module. And then when I send this out, we can do that. Now, a lot of people will say, hey, I want to send four or five documents. That's also fine. You can just add multiple of these. You can stack these up and you can add a handful of file links and it will just stack the links um, on top of each other. If you would rather do it a different way, so whether you're doing this in an email or if you're doing this in you know, in your homepage, anytime you're creating a link, there is an option for link button. So this is just another way to link to the document library. This process won't allow you to upload from your computer. So again, if you're wanting to add a file from your computer, this file option is the one you want to use. But if you're wanting to link to an existing document, you could also just do it as a standard link. And this gives you a little bit more control over it. And this process is pretty much the same for a custom page or the home page. And I'll show that um, very quickly after this. But if we choose to go in and build a link. So this is this build a link tool that we have. That's very, you know, um, those of you who've been with Club Express for a while have are probably fairly familiar with the build a link pop-up. This is the same way we build a link pretty much anywhere on Club Express. For the link type, we have a lot of different options, but when you're looking at the build a link tool, one of the types is document. When we choose document, just like before, we select what folder we're pulling from, and there's our list of folders. And if I want to pull that new folder version five, or let's just do our voting bylaws document. We have the option to link directly to that document. And then the rest just works like our standard build a link. You can have it be a text link. You can have it be a button link if you want it to show up like a button, um, or you can actually insert an image so that clicking on that image will take you to this document, or you could even create a QR code. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as a text link and I can save that. And there's a little text link that goes straight to that option. If I click on that, it would download uh, that document. So that works very similarly to that file upload. One interesting thing about using build a link instead of linking to the file, when you are building a link to a document, there is one extra option. If we wanted to link to bylaws, instead of linking to a particular document, we can actually choose this option that says link to folder and we can link straight to the bylaws folder in the in the director in the the library uh, <laughs> document library sorry um so instead of linking to a particular document we can just send people to the document library with this folder opened for them so if we save that now this is pointing to the bylaws and if i click on this this takes us right to our document library and it's already opened our bylaws for us and there's all of our bylaws documents. So if you wanna send people you know, five, 10 or 12 documents, you can just load those into a folder and then send that email to them and they would click on that link in that email, it would take them to the website with that folder open for them. So again, this is, a, this is an email that I'm crafting. This is a, an email I'm sending. And this is just what I'm putting in the email is this link and clicking on that link. Now, when you're doing the build a link tool, you can do that anywhere. So that, again, I'm doing this in a, an email, but I can do that on my homepage or on a custom page as well. If we go over to one of our page editors, let's just go edit a custom page. This is another place where I'm going to move through quickly because we have lots of training videos and tutorials and manuals on editing pages, but I'm focusing in on linking to documents. So I'm just going to go and edit a random page here. And whenever I am editing a section, if I want to use the link widget, so if I use a link widget, there's that same build a link tool. So now we're no longer making an email, we're editing the content of a web page. And I can say, I want to link to a document and I can do the same thing I just did before. I can either link to a specific document or I can link to you know, the folder itself. And that just does the same exact thing as we were doing in the email. So those work um, exactly the same way. Uh, we just link to a specific document or a specific folder. If I link to a document instead, let's actually link to a specific document. Now, if I click on that document, it should just either open the document if it's a PDF or download if it's not a PDF.
that's a lot of information that I just fed in a very short amount of time. I know we're at the hour, but let's take a few minutes. Um, Sam, what are our, what's our Q&A looking like? I'm, I'm sure that there are hundreds of questions. There are a handful of questions. One thing, if you would do us a solid favor and show us how to leave a comment on a document or rate a document from the user side of the module, yeah. a couple people wanted to take a peek at that. So again, I'm clicking, I'm clicking switch to view mode here. If we put it on, let's see, is it in, I can't remember if I put it on the menu or not yet. There it is. So documents. So for example, as a member, let's not even use the control panel at all. If we go over here to our members menu, the documents are on our members menu. And if I click on documents, this is what the document library looks like for a member. And if I go over here and let's say, let's leave our opinion on these new bylaws, I'm going to click on the name of the bylaws. And I can leave a comment and say, you know, I like these. So that's all I have to do. And I can say, I'll give it a five out of five. I'll say, I like these and I'll submit. And then we can see there is recorded my comments. Martin Smith left on this date and time. I like these. There's my comment. And now anyone else who comes to this, anyone who clicks on this will see there's the comment I left. There's the overall rating. There's my rating. Thank you. And a few more questions about document and document library management. Um, so to point out, you aren't able to delete document library folders when there are documents in the folder. So if you wanted to delete a folder, you'd have to delete the individual documents in the folder and the subfolders before actually being able to delete the folder. Um, and some ways to kind of maybe get around that, you can certainly remove the folder from uh, your website, from the front end of your website, something that Devin highlighted. So you can choose not to show the folder on the website. You can also reorder your folders so that the folder that you don't want to take a look at ever again is all the way at the bottom of your list. So there are a couple of ways to kind of think about that. There were also a few people um, to uh, who had some questions about coordinator access to documents and document libraries. So unlike some of our other features where you can kind of, uh, you know, partition access for your coordinators in the document library, when you assign a coordinator to the library, they're able to see and manage all folders and documents, very similar to an administrator who would have access to the document library. So when you're thinking about assigning those rights to someone, keep that in mind. The only uh, instance where that would not apply is if you are a website uh, or if you're an organization with subgroups where all of your subgroups are sharing a single site. In that case, you'd be able to assign a coordinator to have access to folders just for that subgroup. But in any other case, your coordinators are going to have access to all of the folders and documents. They'd also be able to handle document approvals, just like an administrator. And let's see, there were a couple more questions about the types of documents that are in the folder and what you're able to do with them as a user. So when Justin, or excuse me, when Devin opened up a couple of the uh, files, you notice that the PDF, for example, opened up in a new tab in his browser. Um, if you're maybe downloading some other full, uh, some other files, like a Word document or an Excel file, that would actually download to your user's device. Um, one specific example that came up was a PowerPoint presentation. So if you linked uh, to a PowerPoint presentation that's being uh, that's living in your document library. Library, clicking that link wouldn't play the presentation for the user. It would just download a copy of the slide decks to that user's device, and they'd be able to open it up in PowerPoint or whatever they have on their own device. So um, keep that in mind when you're disseminating those documents. So PDFs just open up in a new tab, um, and that might be something that we're all most familiar with. And for document approvals, 
Administrators and coordinators for the document library will always receive a notification that documents are ready for approval. Um, and it'll come through as soon as someone uploads a document to a folder that allows member uploads. And then you just pop right into the back end, like Devin's showing us, click that approvals option, and you'll see all of the documents listed. Um, and you can either approve them or reject them. Um, I'll address, so one extra thing, this is kind of a, um, I kind of showed you how to link to a document in a, in a particular use case, but I will show you whenever you are, let's say, let's use this view documents. There is an extra option here. So the trash can here, that's how you delete a document. This is where you can go and take a look at the comments on the document from the back end. This middle icon, this clipboard. This is where you can go and find the manual links to a document. So there's two options when you click on this. This will give you the URL of the document. This first one I use very rarely. Um, you'll notice it doesn't have the, you know, uh, HTTPS, Demo Club Pro, ClubExpress.com. It doesn't have the name of the website leading into it. What that means is this will only function within Club Express. It'll only function in your website. But if you were to use this as a link somewhere on the website, it should function and take them to that document. The much easier option is just to kind of avoid any potential chances of that not working and grabbing this second link. This is just a URL that points straight to that document. Um, the reason I point this out, nine times out of 10, I'm wanting to use my link builder to grab this um, because it's going to automatically create it as a hyperlink. But sometimes if I just want to text someone or, or send them a, a Teams message or if I'm creating an email on a different device and I just want to grab a link to a specific document, you can come in here and grab this. And as long as the, you know, as long as the person that clicks on this link has permission to view it. So again, visibility, visibility, if that document is set to all you know, all users public and you send this link to someone who is, you know, either a member or not, it should work for them as long as, you know, every step in the chain is set to all members public. If at any point in the chain, it is requiring them to be an admin or a member or a member of a committee, they will have to log in in order to get access to that. If you copy this link, um, there is a specific use case that someone pointed out, and I will show kind of a quick trick. A lot of people sometimes ask, can I put a specific document, not the document library, can I put a specific document on my menu? The short answer is no. The slightly more complex answer is yes with extra steps. Um, when we go to edit our menu, so I copied that link that I was just looking at. When we go to edit our menu down here, there's an option down here at the bottom that says external menu links. Now, just because it says external menu links doesn't mean it actually has to point off of your website. We can say add an external link. And this is where we can put that thing I just copied. So I'll paste. There's that URL that's pointing at a very specific document. And I can say, you know, document. You know, whatever the name of that document is. And I'll save. And now I've got this option for document. This doesn't put it straight on the menu. It just creates an option for us to have it on the menu. So now that I've created that menu link pointing to a specific document, I could come up here and I can say, hey, I want on my members menu, I want to have, and you'll see there's an option here for extra menus, document is going to show up as an option for my available menu items. And I could add it that way. So a few extra steps, it's not quite as easy as just saying, hey, document menu, but it is possible to put a link on your menu that just goes to a very particular document. Thank you, Devin. And a couple of other questions. So there was one question that came through and I um, confirmed that this is correct and I don't know if it's as designed or not. And perhaps you can provide a little bit of color. So when an administrator is uploading documents, if they choose to upload a document from the member side of the library, maybe they just, they haven't quite navigated over to the control panel. They see the upload button on the member side and they just throw the document in the document library there. Um, so it still goes through the approval process and still notes that the document needs to be approved. Do you know if that's as designed simply oh. because that's on the user side? Maybe we change that. I know 
long ago it, it used to just let admins go straight through maybe we've changed that that might have been an update that i wasn't aware of um let's i mean we can we can troubleshoot that I, really really quickly yes and so that was something that um we'll we'll talk with our development team double check that that isn't maybe a, a little bug that got jostled with some of our recent updates that we've added um couple of other questions. Okay. One question specifically that came up about um, adding email newsletters to your document library. So there isn't a way to say, you know, if you've created an email that you've sent out using blast emailing to just plop that into your document library, the way that you would handle that is printing a PDF copy of the email and adding that into your document library. Do you happen to know if let's say, uh, you know, I sent out an email as the president of a club and I received it as a member, maybe in my uh, in my Outlook inbox. Do you know if a an actual message is a document type that can be uploaded to the library? There is an email format that can be uploaded. I would not recommend storing it that way simply because the, the email format only really wants to be read in email viewers. So like you'd mm -hmm. want to open it with Outlook or something like that. Um, I would say if you wanted to do something like that, you can just print that email. And most computers nowadays, when you hit print, there's an option to say print to PDF. So you could save that email as a PDF and then upload that. Um, but when we send an email out, that email isn't stored anywhere on the system as a single document. Um, it's stored as HTML in our system. So you would have to kind of like make sure you include yourself on that email, receive it, save it as a PDF and upload it. A few extra steps, but it's possible. Um, it's just a matter of making sure you save it, you know, in a readable format. But again, there is like, if you, if you, you know, are savvy enough, you can, you can save an email as an email format document, but it's not a document I recommend uploading. I would, I would again, really stick to uh, PDF when possible. And um, one of the kind of last things that I'll touch on, there were um, some folks in the chat who were thinking of reorganizing their document library with a lot of years worth of documents. And it's a big task and it is one that should not be taken lightly. And so um, there were questions if we had any tips and I can think of a few off the top of my head and Devin, if you have any as well. Um, personally, I would probably start with culling. Um, you know, if you have a decade's worth of documents that you're storing, certainly start by going through and deciding what you're going to keep and what you're not keeping. Um, I would start there. And then based on what you have left, that's when you can start to maybe even rethink your folder structure. So if you've kind of let folders get out of hand because you've just been hoarding electronic items, now would be the time to say, based on what you have left after you've called, how are you going to reorganize those folders um, and thinking about going forward, what you're keeping, what you're not keeping and how you're keeping that organized. Um, it's definitely not a project I would take on alone. That seems like a team effort. <laughs> um, so I would maybe start with getting a group of folks together to kind of help you make those decisions too. Devin, do you have any suggestions for clearing out um, data hoarding? <laughs> Uh, um, cle clearing out yes and no. I, I understand the desire to, to hang on to documents. I am, uh, unfortunately a data hoarder myself. I have a server that I maintain a lot of documents in, and I just can't bring myself to delete anything. I just like to keep it organized, but keeping it organized is what saves me from, you know, losing my mind to the masses of mass amounts of data, um, doing things like storing. Cause again, you can, there's no limit to the storage. You can have as many documents as you want, but keeping it organized so that no one folder has hundreds of documents in it. So you'll see, you know, as a quick example, meeting minutes here, I could do something like adding year folders. And so I could do, you know, 2021. So now I've got folders called, you know, say 2021, 2022. And what I would do is, you know, once a year, it's not much effort to go and create 12 folders, January, February, March, April, May. And then at the end of the year come, you know, when it's time to move over, instead of moving all of these documents to an old year, what I would do is just move that whole folder over, make a new January. So now I could take the January from 2023 at the end of this year, which is coming up, I can say, this is an old January. This belongs in, you know, say 2022 or something like that. I can just edit that whole folder 
And we can see this is currently a subfolder of meeting minutes. And I'll say, I want January to now be in 2022. And I can just change the subfolder. And so now January is gone. January is now in 2022 and it takes all of its documents with it. So that is one way. And you could even go a step, a step farther and say, you know, we can add another folder. I, I always err on the side of more folders is better. So I can say, you know, let's say old minutes. And I could have, you know, my meeting minutes. These are all of my modern meeting minutes from this current year. And then I can put my years. So I'll put 2022 in old minutes. So just a matter of, you know, treating, treating your your uh, document library like a filing cabinet. So if I know, hey, I want to look at meeting minutes, the first thing you see is all of your current minutes. And you say, well, I need to go look at something old. You click on old minutes, you see 2022, 2023, so on and so forth. And then within those, they're all organized for by month. So with a handful of clicks, you can you know quickly drill down to a very specific um time of year without having to look at a big old pile of here's the last, you know, 200 meeting minutes from the last 20 years. Um, that, that would be my advice is use folders more than you think because organizing in folders is, is a lot easier than having to eventually, you know, do it in a bulk process. Um, if you're sitting on, you know, 500 documents, that is a Herculean effort to kind of like backdate all of those. As long as you're, you know, going forward, you keep your data clean and organized, makes it a lot easier. I think that about wraps up our big questions for today's session, Devin. All righty. All right. Well, document library is a, is a big one. It ties into a lot of other places, especially when we're talking about linking. Um, I will, I know I said I would say it a bunch of times, so I'm going to say it one more time. Keep visibility in mind. Always, especially when you're doing folder organization. So this to, to keep on that topic. If we're looking at our meeting minutes, if we set meeting minutes to, to members only, that means old minutes is members only, that means 2022 is members only, that means January is members only, and that means everything in January is members only. Whatever we set any folder, everything in the downstream from that folder obeys that kind of the strictest level of requirements. So even, and again, if I set meeting minutes to public, but old minutes to members, then everything below old minutes gets set to members. So very, very, you know, crucial that you understand the way that visibility works. You know, I used to work on the Club Express support team and I usually, I got calls all the time. Hey, my members can't open this folder. You know, well, it's because it's inside of another folder that is set to admin only. Um, so always, you know, again, the, the uh, filing cabinet analogy, if you lock the cabinet, you can't get to the files with it, so. All right, guys, uh, we will see you in, I hope we'll see some of you in November for our event bootcamp or our event uh, uh, drills. And then we'll see those of you who are coming for our webinars in December. Keep an eye on clubexpress.com forward slash calendar um, for when we get those webinars on the books. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure there will also be emails about the uh, upcoming webinars in December as well. And you'll probably get more emails in the next week about uh, event drills. So if you haven't signed up yet, you know, keep an eye. All right, guys, we will see you next time.